We want to thank you all for coming. Uh, we're here to uh, update everyone on the uh, investigation into the death of the six-month-old child that occurred this past Sunday. Um, to my left, starting at the end, is uh, Jerry Brewster from the Genesee County Sheriff's Department. Good morning. Assistant Chief Rob Yeager, City Police. Good morning. Detective Sergeant Todd Crossett, City Police. Good morning. And District Attorney Larry Friedman. And in the back is Chief uh, Jim Maxwell from the City Fire Police. Their City Fire. Um, I'm going to read a press release and then we'll open it up to questions. Uh, the Dayton Police Department has arrested Jeffrey Geets, age 28, of 10 Olin Avenue in the city as a result of an investigation into the death of a six-month-old child which occurred on Sunday, December 14th. Jeffrey Dietz has been charged with one count of manslaughter in the second degree for recklessly causing the death of the child and is currently being held in Genesee County Jail pending arraignment today at 1.30 in city court. At approximately 9.48 a.m. on the morning of Sunday, January 14th, Mercy Medics and City of Batavia Fire Department EMS personnel were dispatched to 10 Olin Avenue for a reported unresponsive six-month-old child. Upon arrival, EMS personnel found the child to be unresponsive and not breathing. EMS personnel immediately began efforts to revive the child, who was transported to United Memorial Medical Center in the city, where the child was pronounced dead at 11.20 a.m. Detectives from the Tavia Police Department responded to UMMC, where initial investigation revealed the child was left in the care and custody of Jeffrey Dietz by the child's mother on Saturday, January 3rd. Detectives learned that the child was last seen alive at approximately 6.30 a.m., and at approximately 9.30 a.m., it was reported by Dietz and another family member that the child was not breathing and a call to 911 was placed. An autopsy was performed on Monday, December 15th at the Monroe County Medical Examiner's Office. Preliminary information indicated the child suffocated, multiple, suffered from multiple injuries to the brain causing death. The child's body was sent to Strong Memorial Hospital in Rochester for further examination. This exam will consist of a full skeletal, neurological, and dental exam. Further details will be released following the completion of those exams. <clears throat> Detectives interviewed Dietz, along with other witnesses, and collected physical evidence over the last few days. The information developed led to the arrest of Jeffrey Dietz on the charge of manslaughter in the second degree. City police worked in conjunction with the Monroe County Medical Examiner's Office, the Genesee County Coroner Karen Lang, the Genesee County Sheriff's Office, the Genesee County District Attorney's Office, New York State Police, and the SUNY Brockport Police. We shall open up to questions. Sir, uh, is, is this death as a result of what we would commonly call shaken baby syndrome? Let me answer that. Um, if you could just go on up there, Larry, it would be really appreciated. Thanks. The question is, was this death caused by what is commonly known as shaken baby syndrome? Um, and I guess the, the, the key part of that question is the, the, the use of the term commonly known. What I would say is that neither medically or legally do we use that term. Um, and I, I recognize that it is uh, commonly known as that, and that may be uh, a layman's term for what uh, occurred here, but, but it's not a term that, that we would use. Uh, what would you use, sir? Well, uh, just as the chief said, it's a, a traumatic brain injury. How was it caused, sir? Well, it, it was caused, uh, our understanding from talking to the medical examiners, it was caused by another person. Um, you, who you believe to be Mr. Dean? Certainly. So how, how, how did he do this? Uh, again, you know, we're not going to go into great detail now on uh, what was said, but uh, <coughs> witnesses have been questioned in detail. Um, and uh, there, of course, is the physical evidence and uh, what the medical examiner has told us. But again, uh, neither the police investigation nor the medical examination uh, are complete. And, um, you know, this, this is very early in the, the stage, both as far as the, uh, the police are concerned, the medical examiner's office is concerned, and we're concerned. I mean, uh, the, uh, the arraignment with counsel has not even occurred yet. Did Mr. Were there Freeman, statement, why did sir? you not charge homicide? in this case, and is it possible that these charges, or this charge could be elevated? Okay, well, first of all, uh, it is a homicide charge. Uh, in other words, a homicide it's includes... It's a low grade. Well, <laughs> a homicide includes uh, a murder, manslaughter, criminal negligent homicide. They're all homicide charges. This is a criminal charge. It is a homicide charge. 
Uh, Why not murder? Why not murder? Okay. Well, generally, uh, murder involves intentionally causing the death of another person. Generally speaking, that's the most common uh, basis for murder charge, and uh, and uh, that is not what is supported by the evidence we currently have. Did you make a statement, sir? You you have a, at least a statement to work with from Mr. Deeds? Well, uh, he was interviewed. Yes, he was interviewed. And I'm not yes. sure how many people here have actually read Deeds' deposition. He says that he fell down the stairs with the baby. I mean, you have to read that to know that. So he fell down the stairs with his six-month-old son and then, and then failed to tell anyone. Okay. So that's essentially how this happened, correct? Uh, all I can tell you, first of all, is that as you're all, I'm sure, aware under the uh, Fair Trial Free Press guidelines, uh, we are prohibited from discussing the content of statements made by defendants. So I, I can't I can't discuss the Well, in this release, statement. there's kind of a, there's a gap in the time frame of what happened. Last seen alive at 6.30. Does that play a factor? Talk to me about the timeline and if that played a factor in kind of the investigation and the charges that were filed. You're talking about the timeline between uh, when he was what, last seen alive and then when okay. the nine certainly, certainly that's a factor uh, in the conclusions that have been reached in this case. Yes, as to the, the cause of the death, the time of when uh, injury uh, injuries may have been inflicted, and uh, the time it was reported. Yes. Were there any other people present in the residence in the hours leading up to the ambulance call? Or uh, again, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that type of detail uh, at this point. Well, you mentioned witness statements. I mean, were they eyewitnesses, or are they just saying stuff that they believe happened? Um, you know, again, I, I guess I'm not going to go into that kind of detail. Is Mr. Deeds known to you, uh, Chief, uh, to get prior um, contact with the police? Yes, we've had prior contact with, with uh, Jeffrey Deeds in the past. Um, I, I don't have his criminal history in front of me, but he is known to the police. I'm sorry, I'm confused when you say witnesses, but then you're saying nobody was in the house well, except for deeds. Well, well, witnesses, you know, it doesn't necessarily, the, the question was asked before, are we talking about eyewitnesses or people or information? Witnesses are obviously not just in, inclusive of people who saw uh, a crime being committed. You know, there, there can be witnesses to certainly to surrounding circumstances. So there are a number of people that have been interviewed about this case, certainly, and uh, but that's not the same thing as saying that there are people who saw the injuries being caused. Is the maximum on man two still five to fifteen, sir? Well, um, yes. Okay. Yes. Are you saying is, like I said, I'm just trying to figure out what you're trying not to say and say, which is, are you saying these are people that are just speaking of who they are or what kind of relationship these people had? Is he a boyfriend? Is he the father well, of the child? Um, to answer the last part of your question, uh, the information we have is that he's the father of the child. Uh, is he married to the mother of the child? No. Any, indi the any indication of negligence? Was he uh, involved, uh, any drugs or alcohol involved, any kind of negligence like that, um, leaving him alone for an extended period of time or anything like that? Uh, I, I wouldn't refer to this uh, as negligence, no. Okay. I mean, Chief, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean and I guess to be, to be more clear on what I'm saying is, um, Negligence is often a civil term. You know, you go from negligence to criminal negligence to recklessness, and, and then up to intent. And what we're dealing with here, as far as the charge of manslaughter in the second degree, is recklessness. Chief, is there an error in the case here that the mother left the child with Dietz on Saturday, January 3rd? Did you mean Saturday, December 13th? That is correct. And also in the beginning of that paragraph, Sunday, December 14th, I'm assuming. That is correct. Okay. Uh, Mr. Friedman, could you give us a layman's definition of manslaughter to? Uh, manslaughter, uh, basically, is in its simplest form, is recklessly causing the death of another person. Is it obvious that uh, the child was hit? Yeah, I, don't, I don't think we've used the term hit as far as what happened to the child. Injury to the brain, which does not necessarily involved the child being hit. Uh, well, any indication that he, because uh, I don't think I, if you answered this, I'm sorry I missed it, any indication that he was in any way uh, on any kind of substance at the time of the baby's death? Um, I do not believe there's any evidence of that at this time. 